Hello there, my friends, and welcome back to the Brightworks. I do appreciate you bearing with me through this a little bit of a delay, but we are back in business, baby, and we are going to be churning out these videos one day after another. One a day keeps the beyond all reason cravings at bay. <laughs> uh, I feel good to be back. It was a nice little break. Uh, got some of my personal stuff and things figured out. And now I'm ready to get back into business. I feel like what better place to get back into it than a nice, long, beyond all reason match. Eight versus eight on Supreme Isthmus. Now up to version 1.6.2. Well-known map within the community. Seen several iterations over the last couple of uh, months now. Definitely for the better, I believe. I think we've definitely changed up the meta to a degree where now it's no longer the, uh, the sort of tedium that we used to see. I think we see much more interesting matches on this map now than we used to before. Representing a red team spawning here on the southwestern side. Supreme Isthmus. It's going to be Kyoge. Kyoge, or Kyoji, maybe. Depending on how that J is pronounced. Is the J pronounced like a G, or is it pronounced like a J? <laughs> Kyoge here. Maybe it's pronounced like a J. Kyoge going to be... Uh, I'm going to go with Kyoji, actually. I think Kyoji sounds good. Kyoji here, our red team leader, building an LLT here, trying to protect some of these wind turbines. Bit of an interesting design to those wind turbines, but I suppose it works. Not very many convenient angles for a tick to hide around over here, but uh, yeah, there are there are still opportunities, right? Bargaining for a uh, transport here by handing out two of these wind turbines. It's a very funny little bargain that you can give, but uh, I suppose it works, right? You get yourself transport for exchange of uh, building some energy production back here saves the player in the back from having to build as many wind turbines yeah i think it's probably a fair deal <laughs> a little bit nicer maybe than handing over just a fistful of metal and some energy scraps as well i like it quite a lot scout plane was built over here that's quite nice going to be going across the map over here towards the green player green player all the way across <clears throat> excuse me just had a delicious meal Still remnants of it, slippery sliding their way down my throat. As uh, graphic as that sounds. Tick has snuck by over here. Blue team leader going to be spawning in the northeastern side. Going to be poop Asaurus. Very straightforward and to the point. However, going into a hovercraft bay. Interesting. Looks like he might have bargained himself into a, uh, a little bit of a res bot right there as well. That's quite nice to see. But yeah, going for hovercraft. That's an interesting move. It means you start very slowly because Hovercraft Labs cost a huge upfront cost, 900 metal out of the 1,000 that you start with. It's a massive, massive upfront investment. Not to mention all the metal you put into uh, metal extractors and all that sort of stuff as well. So it really does cost a trans, tra uh, sorry, a gigantic, I was going to say transmorphic. <laughs> Don't know where these words are coming from. Just finished up today's stream as well, so I guess I'm, uh, I'm still riddled with caster's curse which is just an affliction that causes you to say random words when you mean others it's a huge amount of money that you're investing into hovercraft labs and for what purpose well on one hand it means you can basically ignore torpedo launchers it also means that you can harass the land-based units over here on the other side of the map so this is quite nice little seeker going to be able to hopefully at the very least ah we're slacking a little bit there we go going to eventually take down this lazarus right here that's quite nice uh, well, <laughs> if he can figure it out. There we go. Finally figures out how to take down that Lazarus, and that will be, uh, at the very least, about 100 metal down the drain here for our hot pink player, Disco Star Pig. Man, couldn't think of a better player here to uh, inherit the the hot pink color than Disco Star Pig. Was it actually his his res bot? It might have actually been Fres... Fre uh, uh, maroon. We'll go with Maroon. I'm not sure what that says, but out of... Uh, caution i'm just gonna call it the maroon player <laughs> anyway i uh, i am i am known well to uh butcher the names butcher the words of of uh languages that i do not speak quite intensely oh a little bit of a commander duel over here uh-oh looks like we have two commanders duking it out over here llt after llt setting up their lines trying desperately to uh fight the other it's the seeker versus kyoji both of which trying desperately to gain some sort of an advantage here. Both commanders desperately in need of some more uh, LLTs all over the place. Can't stop production. You have to keep your LLT army growing. Yep, there we go. Taking the damage on the actual commander here. It's going to level up the LLT quite a lot. 
Yeah, that LLT is going to go way high up the level because it's firing at the commander. Kyoshi finally notices. Now that LLT is super powerful. It's a Silver Star LLT. Oh, no. See, it's firing almost twice as fast right now. That's funny. Maybe not twice as fast. It's like 1.25 as fast. Down goes that LLT. Well, I'll be damned. This uh, Silver Star LLT is going to be the star of the show here, keeping Seeker in the game. This is a weird battle. I don't know how you win this one. Maybe the best option here would be to try and just dive the commander and go for a little bit of a trade and reinforce with units of your own. But now we have the, the skaters out and about trying to shut down any air units over here. Oh, what a tricky battle. Okay, oh, she's going to be going for a uh, bot lab over here of all things. Okay, try and produce some units, sure. Seeker is a little bit uh, behind the curve in that respect. Needs to start marching forward. Needs to march forward and at the very least try and take down some of these LLTs. Try and degun them down, I think would probably be the best option here. Rocketeer is now coming out for Kyoji. Cannot believe that he managed to pull off a, a bot lab over here on this island. That is too funny. Not enough LLTs to dissuade the commander from jumping in here for Kyoji. And yeah, there we go. Degunned away. Bomber's trying to connect over here. It's going to be slow to bomb all that down, though. Anti-air coming up as well. Rocketeer is, I think, probably a much better option as far as shutting all this down goes. You know, bombers are taking heavy fire from that light anti-air here. I love that the team was working together there, but that is too funny. What a battle. I, mean, I don't know if I've ever seen two commanders duke it out for this long on the island. Typically, that uh, ends up in a pretty explosive trade. Both commanders here trying desperately to keep, keep well, keep themselves alive. Oh, the Seeker going for the the, the trade here. Oh, he's going to get it, too. He got too close. Oh, my good, no, good lord. The Seeker managed to actually bring down Kyoji's commander right there in an epic trade, blowing up himself in order to uh, take down the red commander here. That is just too good. Immediately, Kyoji starts up a constructor over here, but there's already a Garpike on the way here for our green commander. No way for the green commander to eat all this up. However, uh, no way for the uh, red commander yet to eat all this up either. Oh, losing the Rocketeer. Oh, no. Oh, no. The Rocketeer was our only thing to break that LLT right there. Now the Garpikes are here. They're going to be more than happy to tear down any of this uh, in infrastructure over here, this eco structure. Okay, we need to start producing a whole bunch of constructors. I, I think maybe four constructors would probably be pretty good. What a wild match over there. Front lines, well, they're the front lines. They're holding on strong here. It looks like the red team has actually claimed a little bit of land right now, holding one more metal extractor over the uh, the, the blue here, the li Lil Sky and Chukwi. Ch Chuki? Hmm. Troubling. Not sure how to pronounce that one. The dark green player. <laughs> holding that one metal extractor. Uh, I mean, it's significant. That's a 4.3 metal extractor, so not to be undersold right there. That's uh, about a fourth of your early game economy. Maybe even a third of your early game economy. Yeah, those those are definitely well worth their weight in gold, those uh, 4.3s. You gotta remember, that's per second too. It's pulling that bad bad metal rad metal in and uh, folding it into the economies here. I like the inclusion of the missile trucks here. We're actually really heavy on the missile trucks. Inclusion of the missile trucks, more like I like the only missile trucks. Oops, all missile trucks. <laughs> they are doing good work though. And uh, yeah, I mean, we're starting to get to those numbers where the missile trucks can really start to whittle things down, especially over time here. And you can see these engagements are slowly but surely turning in the favor of the missile truckies. Missile truckers. There we go. They got their trucking hats on. And they're filing, firing little uh, tow missiles at all of these random little structures over here. The gauntlet has come online, though, for our green player. We'll have to see how much, <clears throat> we'll have to see how much damage this uh, gauntlet can do. I'm not sure. Not sold. A bit further forward. And I would probably say it's in a pretty good spot, but I'm not quite so sure if this is well worth it here. That being said, it does just barely cover this metal extractor, which, if we can keep that consistently denied, will be worth it. We've got to keep it denied basically the whole game, though. And it looks like, at least for the time being, it's doing its job. No contest for the Northern Sea right here. Disco Starpig has gone into, wow, a very far forward T2 lab. This is interesting. 
I feel like we just saw this in another game pretty recently, or maybe I saw it. I can't remember if I casted that game or not. Uh, where somebody put a put their T2, basically their whole base, right here on the coast right here. I'm not really sure why. <laughs> I'm not sure what uh, what changed in the meta to make that a, uh, a viable reality. I suppose that's... Uh, I suppose it's a convenience because you can just build the construction turrets over here and then you can also go up to the T2 metal extractors. But then you're going to work backwards anyway, so it's like, eh, why? What, what's the point in the first place? I am not sure. Either way, nice to nice to see that Disco Star is eating up that T2 lab, using it to go into those T2 metal extractors. That's quite nice. That's a pitfall we see many people make is uh, oftentimes failing to eat up the T2 lab when going into the early T2 economy when they can't afford to get those T2 metal extractors. Once you get two or three of them up and running, usually they can just pay for themselves. They can pay for the next metal extractor after that. Uh, but that first and second one can oftentimes be really difficult to fund. And so it's usually a better idea to make sure that you get those up and running, even if it costs you the uh, laboratory. Wow, Kyoji has gone into a T2 naval lab. Uh, it was not with the metal over here. Oh, okay. Checking back in over on this side, and it looks like it's been a complete flip of the fates. Our uh, red player has been pushed entirely out of the southern island over on this side. Garpikes calling it their home. Funny little alligator tanks. Those three tracked tanks. Uh, Destroyer over here having a fabulous time. Just ravaging these forces. I mean, yeah, this is 100% <laughs> efficient, so no reason for uh, Kyoji not to keep that parked over there. Impressive that we managed to get up to a T2 so quickly. I guess we're already into the T2 stage here, 11 minutes in. I kind of expected this with how long the replay file was. I uh, kind of expected it to be a slower T2 transition here, but we're pretty much on time. 11 minutes is not the slowest T2 transition I've ever seen. We have some medium tanks pushing their way through over here. Looks like the uh, yellow player, Lu, Lu 5 ck Lusk. This is supposed to be Red Lusk, or Lusk. Pushed out of their natural habitat right now. For some reason, over here... Oh, well, I guess it makes sense over here because the uh, the sea has been gone for some time, so maybe these destroyers were harassing the base. They decided to uh, cut their losses and just build over on this side of the Isthmus. That actually makes a whole lot of sense now that I'm looking at it. Yeah, okay. I see the, I see the reasoning, and I, uh, I think it makes sense. Yeah, why, why continue building over here if you're just going to be bombarded by these when instead you can just go build over here and you have the support of your teammate over here. Now, that was slick. Not sure if you caught it right there, but he was taking fire on the laboratory and so ate up the laboratory with the constructors just in time as it was damaged in order to get the full refund from the lab rather than losing it to the wreckage. That was really nice. Slick move right there by Lusk, our yellow yellow player. That was That was clean way more difficult to pull that off than you might think initially. It's a, uh, it's, it's a feat of timing, to say the very least. So the red team's main advantage is on the naval sea, the southern, southern sea and the naval field. As you can see, they've got basically complete control over here, although I will say this island is kind of a, uh, kind of a mark against the, uh, red player there. It's a feels bad, for sure. Going for a couple of those underwater T2 metal extractors. I think it's a good idea basically want to get T2 up and running as quickly as you can across every metal extractor that you can. Nicely done handing out T2 over here. I'm going to assume it wasn't uh, built anyway. It was handed out. Yeah, looks like our orange player has been handing out T2 to whoever so needs it. It's very nice to see. Those uh, T2 propagating through your team can really make a tremendous difference. We've all seen it. You, uh, you start to get those T2 spread throughout your team and one thing leads to another and everybody's got that T2 economy. The T1 units start coming out in mass and the T2 units start to finally start, well, making their way across the field. Hoopasaurus, what are you up to over here? Going for a little bit more of a, more than standard fortification over on this area. Usually we see a couple LLTs and we call it good, but Hoopasaurus deciding to uh, reinforce this area with, at the very least, some significant anti-air firepower, an anti-nuke at some point, and I'm guessing going to be going into even more of those T2 metal extractors here too. Already full-blown T2 in the back labs over here, and we are going into T2 unit production for the naval high seas. Can't wait to see those clash with a whole bunch of these uh, tanks over here. I have a feeling these tanks are going to get absolutely ravaged. Cover tanks, yeah, they just don't stand up against the naval forces, and for good reason. The naval forces are much more expensive than those hover tanks. But uh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's, it's, well, it's not a happy matchup. <laughs> put it, put it this way, it's a, it's a losing matchup for the hovercrafts. You need tremendously more forces here for the 
uh, hovercraft player than you do for the naval player, and overall it just ends up not being very efficient. So this is really nice. Uh, our uh, green player has gone up to an advanced geothermal over here on the forward position of Supreme Isthmus. Meanwhile, our red team, slacking behind, does not have this geothermal controlled, and that's a huge pain. Now, part of that, of course, is because these destroyers have been ravaging the shoreline over here means that the uh, red team has been pretty uncomfortable holding this side of the isthmus and that obviously is just an advantage for the blue team meaning that they're going to be able to express that as a well a positional advantage moving forward here we can already see a whole bunch of sharpshooters lining up over here wouldn't mind seeing these step forward just a little bit try and fire at some of those yeah there we go well they're trying <laughs> they don't have perfect vision so it's a little bit of a a little bit of a gamble whether they'll hit anything or not. But when they do, significant damage indeed. Yep, there's all those expensive T1 vehicles going down right now. They did manage to get a commander for what it's worth. Not sure what that commander was doing all the way out here. Maybe trying to get some metal or something. Set on a uh, reclaim command that just went a little too far. And uh, yeah, well, that commander went down, so that could be nice. We do have a constructor right here. No reason you couldn't go eat up that commander. Om nom nom. Juicy, juicy, juicy. Hover tanks now rolling into the back lines here. Oh, they're going to catch the T2. That's quite nice. Yeah, very nice. Shut down the T2. Stops any more of those T2 metal extractors from coming up and online. I don't think there's enough here to uh, take down this T2 lab without the shuriken getting involved. But at the very least, very nicely done shutting down that T2. Yeah, it's going to mean that either uh, Lil Sky is going to have to ask for another T2 or finish up this T2 lab of their own and go into a T2 afterwards. I heard aggression. Over here. Oh. Oh, I see. <laughs> These are being told to fire on the graves over here so that they can't be reclaimed. That's a bit odd. I wonder why. I feel like if we spared enough fighters to clear the airspace over here, we might as well try and eat some of that up, right? I don't know. Seems like a, seems like a worthwhile venture. Either way, those wreckages are being destroyed right now. Uh, and here we can see those hover, t hover tanks. They just do not stand against the T2 Navy. No, sir. Dreadnought is out too. They pack a serious punch. Down they go. Yeah. Now the problem, of course, is you invest in so much of this navy, right? But what is it really doing? I mean, you have 10,000 metal worth of navy out on the field right now, but how much value is it actually going to be able to do? Well, there is a T2 lab that's been single-handedly built here by this construction hovercraft. If you manage to take that down, I think it's going to be pretty good looks, but... Still, that's only, uh, you know, that's only 3,000 metal for the 10,000 that you've got. I would far from consider that an even trade over here. Gorgon firing away. We don't see these all too often, but they're pretty powerful. Sawing away at that uh, little force of units over there. All right, this is better. The units now firing. We do have a finch up in the sky giving us a whole lot of vision as well, which is really nice, going to allow some of these uh, long-range bombardment ships to actually reach out and hit pretty hard. Always nice to see. Going to even eat up the lab. Nicely done here by our hot pink player. Eating up that lab, recognizing there's not really any reason to keep these uh, forces here if they're just going to be bombarded uh, endlessly from shore. I think eating up these metal extractors might not be the end of the world either. Disco Star Pig going into an advanced fusion reactor. Actually almost done with it here. Going to be going up against the blue player, who does not have any fusion reactors to speak of. Again, all that metal went into a uh, T2, uh, T2 Navy, that is, right? So, wasn't really, wasn't really so concerned with a whole bunch of, uh, a whole bunch of eco growth, instead making sure that the high seas were contained. And for what it's worth, they are well contained at this point. Missile ships are going to be firing away at whatever they can. To the victor go the spoils, and in the naval theater, the spoils is the ability, or the opportunity, I should say, to barrage your enemy with a never-ending flight of little compact cluster missiles launched from offshore. It's very annoying to deal with. Uh, and, well, I should say it's very annoying because it's almost impossible to deal with. <laughs> There's not a lot of really good options for dealing with those longbows. I mean, you can send some gunships after them, but they have an anti-air missile. Uh, you can send hovercrafts after them, but if they have any naval force at all, hovercrafts are just going to get obliterated. If you build static defenses, well, they don't reach. Uh, and if you, well, just retreat, they can always get a little bit closer, right? So, ah, very difficult to deal with. There's not a there's not a perfect solution to that. 
Uh, and it's why this map tends to fall in the direction of whosoever manages to use longbows to cripple this side of the straits, right? Uh, in this case, certainly going to be the blue player moving these longbows in a whole lot sooner. Do have to be careful with them, though. They're very slow, relatively fragile. You also need a decent scout here, so let's see what the blue player sees. Eh, you know, it's not the worst. We kind of know where the labs are. We kind of know where the wind turbines are, and at the very least where some of the metal extractors are, all of which has been long since upgraded here. Oh, yeah, okay. So that's a problem. Still thinking that the labs are there, but they have long since been moved. <laughs> it's actually the one dead area on this where there's not actually anything, which is quite funny. Okay, that's a, that's a little bit better here. Longbow certainly could reach into the back here again and hit this uh, this eco center over here. Even the Aphis is probably in a little bit of trouble. Uh, maybe. Actually, that's about as far as they can go. Uh, but you do have to remember that, of course, these uh, longbows can't see as far as they can shoot. Okay, they're actually retreating now. Uh-oh. A Starlighter up there. Blasting away. Ooh, we're not going to be able to kill one. We're getting pretty close. You have to be very careful with those. This is the green player. He's had enough. Decided it's time to uh, strike back. The seeker does indeed send a whole flock of ducks under the waters, under the waves, towards the red player's base here. Ducks, of course, with a face-mounted torpedo launcher. They go... Spit out a torpedo towards your direction. And uh, it's not the most devastating torpedo in the game, but it is certainly a torpedo in the game. And uh, any torpedo is good in enough numbers, right? <laughs> A lot of units built over here as well, as well as some uh, twin guards with a nice little wrapping of fortified walls. Very cool. Uh, what are we going to do to save this front line? This looks like a GG type of an army. We have T2, we have T1, we have a whole lot of both. We have tons and tons of forces pushing in here now. No real response yet. Yeah, uh, we're going for a dreadnought, which cannot deal with ducks. No anti-submersible on the dreadnought here. There we go. We start up some paladins. It's a better option. Interesting build power solution here, going for a whole bunch of voyagers rather than going for any kind of uh, construction towers. I mean, not the end of the world. It's just a, a different method of approach, and it is always mobile, of course, which is something to uh, something to be worth considering. Paladins fire their depth charges relatively slowly, though, which is the problem here. You might be able to clean up all these ducks, but it's going to take you hours and hours in order to do so. I just not well I'm just not sure if that's some time that Kyoji has to spare right now. Yeah. yeah the ducks are grouping up. This is a uh, muted battle, right? <laughs> every every sound in this battle is all like whoosh, spoosh. <laughs> We're all 10,000 leagues under the sea. Well, the ducks don't want to pop their heads out of the water, though. Yeah, if they pop their heads out of the water, they're going to be taking the depth charge launcher damage and the gauss launcher, or the gauss cannon damage. Wow, those voyagers keeping this lab alive. I am impressed. Finally, the lab goes down, but not before pumping out a significant number of these uh, paladin here. Voyagers going to make their way. Uh, T3 has hit the field. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Boom, goes the Aphis. Takes down the, uh, or sorry, not the Aphis, the Advanced Geo right here. Takes down all those forces that were incurring over on the red side of the map, though. So at the very least, kind of a problem that solves itself. Tons of damage here to uh, Clown's Gram, or Grin. G-R-4-N. Four is usually an A, so it'd be like Gram, right? The Grandmother of Clowns. For some reason, that's a terrifying thing to think about. Ducks eventually cleaned up over here, and all that metal is now lying on the ocean floor for our uh, red player here. 7.1 thousand metal, I mean, starts up an advanced fusion reactor. Feels like a weird spot for it, but I suppose if you can make it work, then you might as well make it work. Voyager's now going to head on over in this direction and restart the T2 lab over here. Wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, there we go. We've got one of them headed back to reclaim some of this, and we've also got a T2 constructor over here, so I wouldn't be surprised if maybe we see one of these going up well this one specifically gone back rebuilding these metal extractors and getting back into this game if you don't manage to eat the metal out uh from your enemy's base when you kill them you've really not done as much damage as it seems like oh webbers are included here lovely oh they need to be fight commanded though uh oh yeah they're, they're not fight commanded when they're when when you give them a fight command uh issued by hitting f and then moving them 
they will automatically reclaim anything in their path. Whereas if you just send them forward like that, they'll just attack with their Weber gun, but they won't actually eat anything. Uh, so Webers are one of those units that is almost never move commanded. At least I never move command them. Almost always better to just use the Webers by uh, sending them sending them on a fight command so that they paralyze whatever they come across and then devour whatever corpses they can find on the battlefield. T3 hover tanks rolling out here for the blue team, getting ready to go into that full-blown T3 economy. We, uh, <laughs> we're really thinking about it back here. Yeah, it looks like Mito96 has decided it's time to go for a couple of advanced fusion reactors. Going into a T2 aircraft plant at the same time feels a little bit greedy. I'm not so sure about that. I think finishing one of these and then going into a couple of energy converters before getting a T2 plant might be the right move here. But either way, both of those probably going to come up right around the same time. Talk about Razorbacks. We're now up to five, holding the front lines well against basically any sort of T2 uh, or T1. Spybot also gets blasted apart right there. The tick spam has commenced. Obligatory tick spam. <laughs> you don't see a tick spam at least once in your game that you haven't really played. Oh, wow. We've uh, gone for quite a win production here for RG22. Fair enough. I mean, substantial economy right now. Certainly not a uh, terrible choice. Just curious if we select all of these right here and we just select the wind turbines. 20,000 metal of wind turbines to produce about 4,000, 5,000 energy. Something to consider is once you've got the build power up and running and you're not really worried about, uh, yeah, the effect of getting those, uh, the, the couple thousand of energy from those turbines, you might, just, you might start to consider uh, reclaiming them, using that metal elsewhere, trying to uh, build up specifically a bunch of, <coughs> pardon me, a bunch of T2 economy, right? Aphis's, advanced uh, energy converters, all that good stuff. Really did hell on my throat, huh? I guess I, uh, I guess I lost it while I was on that break. <laughs> Didn't even know I had it, but I lost it. <laughs> I agree with I do watercolors. Long kids do indeed suck. They suck just as much as the regular cataphracts. Oh, we're running ticks into a. Ooh, don't like that. No sir. Yeah, we're running ticks directly into a Juno field right now. This is, a, this is a problem that a lot of players run into, is you spend all of your time and effort and money and resources in setting up a T1, a T1 lab spam, only for that T1 lab spam to be shut down by like two Razorbacks or a Juno missile or something of that effect, right? And you get sort of trapped in this, this mentality of like, well, I've already invested all the resources in all these labs, I might as well keep it going. Like surely it's somewhat effective when realistically, no, it's not effective whatsoever. And so this is one of those situations where I think uh, Disco Star Pig would be in a much better position if they just shut all this off, built a uh, metal storage, and then went into a whole bunch of economy right now. I mean, what is this tick spam really accomplishing here? How is it queued? First of all, how is the tick spam queued? Um, okay, not bad. We are focusing on the right-hand side of the Isthmus, but at the very least, these are spread out a little bit. So now we're using these ticks to have vision of the center of the Isthmus. And uh, there goes the Juno missile, shutting it all down. <laughs> you gotta be really careful. Massive Marauder run by over here. Uh, these should be able to do significant damage. Not really any counter that I can see for these Marauder right here. I'd love to see two or three of these split off to go deal with that advanced geothermal. That'd be really nice. Other than that, splitting four of them off to go in this direction and a couple more of them off to go in this direction. There's a Titan we're running directly into here. I'm not sure why. Kind of want to avoid those. Let's see what they can get done. There we go. Taking down the build power. Oh, they're too clumped up. Oh no, peel them off. Gonna lose them all. Oh, they're all bunched up. They're gonna all go down to the advanced fusion. Oh, there's some splitties. Okay, we do see a little bit of a splitty. A splitty 5,000. Okay, well, you know what? The Marauder didn't kill the advanced Geo and the advanced fusion, but I would rather them do this and take down basically everything else uh, rather than all of them die to the advanced fusion reactor explosion and just lose all the Marauders here. I think these are probably going to get way more value now that they've split off. Can we go back for the kill? Eh, they're going to go for the Prude here. I think it's probably a good idea. Prudes produce 750 energy per second. Definitely well worth focusing down. They're very difficult to kill, though. 
Marauder run by definitely one excellent option. Source is commander getting real close to these Marauders. Whoa. Advanced energy converters popping all over the place. Marauder trying to get a little bit of a run by, shutting down these wind turbines. Good source. Commander taking hits too. Uh oh. Uh oh. Commander goes down, pops all the energy converters, leaving the base wide open for these Marauders to run in here. All right, let's see some splitties. Let's see some splitties. Let's, uh, let's lose them all. Frankly, a relatively small note on the back of a devastating attack. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, I mean, certainly a crippling blow right here to the blue team. Shutting down the entire left side, the left hand uh, seaboard side of the blue economy right there. Shutting down metal extractors, geothermals, all sorts of stuff. I just think we probably could have done just a little bit more damage if those have been micro just slightly differently here. More ducks to try and shut down production over here, but there's way too many paladins out now, and I don't think there's going to really be much that those ducks can do with this many of those depth charge launchers on the, on the high seas. There's a saber hanging out underwater here. It's quite funny. Pop goes the ducks. A uh, capital ship has been built over here, which is quite interesting. Can we not see it? Oh, maybe not. The uh, maroon players, Pulsar, is not able to see the capital ship over there, which is quite odd. I wonder if they can't see it or if it's just a vision thing. There's no radar or a line of sight or anything like that. I gotta say, huge commendations to the uh, orange player here for pumping out T3 units and sending them to the front lines, basically keeping the entire front line safe by keeping these Razorbacks here, but I think... It is now high time that we start to use these Razorbacks aggressively. We're now up to a whopping solid and sturdy 10 Razorbacks here. 34 kills between all those bad boys. We're just getting peeled apart by sharpshooters right now. Oh, no. Move, move, move. I don't know why the Razorbacks aren't moving forward. They could certainly do tremendous amounts of damage if they would just step forward here, but they're not. And uh, unfortunately, that is just thousands and thousands of metal going down the drain right now. Ducks being blasted apart here by the Paladins. Nicely done. Good catch. Sniffing out that your opponent is getting back into the water here. Shutting that down. Forcing them to keep taking these uh, inefficient trades with the Ducks here. What am I seeing even more static defense? Yeah, just going for even more of those torpedo launchers. Just to make sure that it's really un unfriendly for them to get to the water. Oh, these sharpshooters. What an excellent play right now. I mean, they're firing every, every so often, but... Whenever they do, they're peeling off layer after layer of these Razorbacks. Two or three of them have already gone down now, just from the sharpshooters firing over and over again. Finally, the Razorbacks step forward. This is the carnage. I mean, you can imagine, right? This Razorback has uh, this Razorback army has been like cut in half basically before it even got to engage. Ah, what a bummer. Yeah, these Razorbacks certainly could have gotten a whole lot more value if they had pulled the trigger quite a bit sooner. Unfortunately, not the case. And so these Razorbacks now are not in big enough numbers to push in here. I mean, maybe they could push along the left-hand side. It really comes down to vision, though. And I bet that RG-22 does not have any sort of read on what's actually out there. Yeah, kind of can see what was out there with the, uh, you know, the, the Razorbacks marching forward, but doesn't really know exactly what's actually pumping out units and where the units are at and all that sort of stuff. Uh, we do, at the very least... Oh, that's a lot of nuclear bombers. All right. Here they come. Oh, maybe not. Dun 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 This is the Royal Air Force right here. All those fighters are all queued into a center position, and if the flak fires on that position, well, end up with a whole lot of dead planes. Oh, where are the bombers? They're dropping their bombs. Slowly but surely. They missed the uh, anti-air, though. <laughs> um, yikes. Yeah, they missed the anti-air ship, and now it's a very, very high-level anti-air ship firing away super, super quickly. <laughs> Whittling away all of those anti- uh, or rather, all those nuclear bombers here. Now they're going to start working on the gunships. I bet, uh, yeah, I bet Kyoji is wishing he brought some more anti-air ships, but still, this one... With uh, 157 kills to its name, 58 now. Definitely well worth its salt. Huh. Well, that was a weird engagement. 
I, I suppose the Ducks and the Bombers managed to kill the Red Navy, but I just don't know if it's a really efficient trade. It's certainly not efficient against this anti-airship right here. T2 Lab is up and running for the green player. Oh, and some res, or res subs are coming out here. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if these res subs manage to eat up any of this metal here, they're going to be in a pretty prime position to push forward. There is these uh, long-range torpedo launchers that are going to be firing away at whatever they can find. If they have any sonar, they do have sonar here as well, so they're going to be able to accurately shoot away at those res subs. Still think it's a red hold over there, but a, uh, a closely, closely contested one. Feels like it was almost broken. I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead here because it looks like both teams were getting ready for aggression, but not quite ready to pull the trigger here. A lot of ducks over here on this side that are trying to uh, get themselves organized into an anti-ship fleet. And there they go, firing away. There are numerous hundreds and hundreds of torpedoes. We do have the capital ship over here continuing to fire away, but mostly just deflected off of these shields over here for the maroon player. Titan now walking out for the orange player as well. We have a T3 gantry, underwater T3 gantry here for the blue player. Puposaurus thinking about getting some of those Titans out on the field. Not bad. Not a bad idea whatsoever, and it's uh, excellent for breaking this line. However, this line is looking really sturdy. That is a solid six pulsars. <laughs> I mean, not bad. I think it takes nine pulsars to... Uh, to, to consistently take down juggernauts, so I, I feel like six is probably enough to take down the Titan. Titan's significantly less uh, healthy than juggernauts. They, they weigh a whole lot less in the health category, uh, but of course very powerful, especially with their pulsar beam that they can fire off their shoulder. Makes them extremely good at taking down static defenses, like exactly what we see over here on the shore. Now, the capital ship could definitely get some value over here, just firing away at all these static defenses. I wonder if the Titan's gonna go over there, though. No, it looks like the Titan's just gonna be rallied over here. Again, preparing for an engagement, but not actually fire fighting one. Titan Brothers over here as well. It's, uh... <laughs> it's a lot of posturing for these players today. The only real fight over here on the southern side between the Ducks and the uh, ships... Sounds like a sports game, right? That's a lot of shurikens. They will be blasted to smithereens here by those anti-airships. Yeah, not before doing a decent job of paralyzing a lot of the stuff over here, though. Yeah, you know what? Allowing enough time for the ducks to get underfoot, and uh, yeah, they're going to be more than happy to fire away at basically everything over here. Ooh, some long-range torpedo launchers have actually been built for the green player, who is now firing back at the forces in red. What a weird battle. <laughs> a torpedo battle. Pew, 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 pew. Static Defense Wars. It's like a much more costly, much upgraded version of the T1 LLT battle we were watching earlier in this game. An infinite stream of ducks. I wonder if some hovercraft mixed into the composition here wouldn't be a bad idea. A couple of hovercraft floating their way across and blasting apart some of the static defense could easily ravage the forces here uh, of the red player, at least the static defense forces. Here come some torpedo bombers. Dropping their payload on top of the Red Forces, trying desperately to shut all this down. Nicely done. They get on top of basically everything over here. Well, the anti-airship's now firing away, though. Starting to chip away at a lot of these bombers, but I think there's just too many. Yeah, the AA boats are going to be forced to retreat. Fighters finally pulled to try and help with all this. Is that the, uh, yeah, that's our hero right there. 269 kills, 74 kills. More and more as more fighters are pulled. Oh my goodness. This is, uh, this might be the most experienced anti-airship I think I've ever seen. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of kills. It's all T1 too. Can we see 300? Oh, we're so close. <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh, wait, no, no, 299. And there we go, 305. This is so frustrating to play against. You know what I'd do? This might not be the most, uh, you know, the most... Oh, here it is. This is this is what I was going to say. This might not be the most uh, courtesy move to do. It's definitely a little bit uh, bad-mannered, you might say. But the tumbleweed spam is almost always difficult to hold. It's an excellent way of breaking the naval blockades. And uh, we can see here there's just no efficient way to take on these tumbleweeds as they're rolling across the sea floor here. Because even if you detonate them, even if you manage to kill them, they're still going to scuff up your ships just a little bit. And that little bit eventually whittles you down to nothing here for fractional cost. I mean, pennies pennies on the on the tumbleweed 
for the uh, the person making the tumbleweeds here. RG22, you're a sick man, but a brilliant strategist. <laughs> it's one of the reasons why whenever we do the streams, I like to change the tumbleweed. Uh, one of the things that one of the tweaks for the tumbleweed that I really like is to make it uh, credit, by the way, to uh, ooh, was it Argon Wolf or Fragnarok? I can never remember. I also can never remember if those are the same person. They kind of blended together. Uh, they, they make a lot of the mods over on the Brightworks Discord channel, which there will be a link to, by the way, in the description down below. Uh, but one of those mods is to make the tumbleweed float across the sea, the sea uh, surface, essentially like a hovercraft would, um, which, for my money, still feels pretty thematic, given that the uh, tumbleweed kind of looks like a little ball, like a little balloon. <laughs> I like to imagine it's just filled with helium. Helium and explosives. And uh, yeah, it, uh, it floats on the water, meaning that these ships can actually use their above water weapons. And it makes the tumbleweeds a whole lot more manageable to deal with, as opposed to this, where the tumbleweeds are essentially unstoppable, at least by any, uh, any, any measure of efficiency. Now, technically you can do it. You need a whole lot of advanced torpedo launchers. You need them spread out and you need them uh, in a sort of a zigzag pattern. And then you have to have the uh, detection for it, right? So you have to have the long range sonars as well. Ah, this is the problem though. Just one or two of them gets through and they're able to do immense amounts of damage in the back line. Oh, gotta be so careful with those bad boys. Wow. Those are, uh, those are some res subs right there. This is a comeback right now for the green player. Managing to get back into this battle off of four advanced fusion reactors, has the T3 gantry, not even bothering with it. Not even worth its metal. Just going into pure res subs to send this entire fleet back at the red player right now. That is brutal. And awesome to see. Yep, Dreadnought's coming back up. Paladin's coming back up. Whole lot of T3 lining up over here on the shore. The Tumbleweed spam is immense, though. There they go. Rolling into the fusion reactors over here. Basically unaltered. This is the problem, right? You kill him, you kill him just a little too close to your own ship. It does a little bit of damage. Fusion reactors pop now. Oh no. Poopasaurus brought low by the tumbleweed. Painful. Terribly, terribly painful. Is it enough? Just don't know if it's enough. Torpedo bombers, not the end of the world. They can uh, they can certainly deal with the tumbleweeds pretty good too. It looks like this is holding on for now, but uh, if you group up those tumbleweeds and you start to get a big cluster of them and you send them forward, it's basically GG. The March of the Titans. <laughs> it's the, uh, oh, what was that called? The walking or whatever, or the... Uh, the rumbling, that's what it was called. The walking. <laughs> the rumbling. The march of the titans right here. Put this back on 1x speed, even though I don't think we were moving much faster than that. Yeah, I mean, uh, you get enough titans together and they're going to be able to break through basically any defense. There's not enough here, and frankly, I don't know if enough is definable. 500 pulsars, maybe. What I like to see after this is usually a whole bunch of resbots. Just try and build about 500 resbots and have them patching together whatever titans do fall. Pretty much nothing overkills the titans, save for a D-gun or maybe a uh, behemoth, which you see trudging its way out of the purple labs here. So uh, yeah, resing is pretty much always an option when you're going for titans. Titans and juggernauts, of course. Juggernauts have a slightly better use case for self-destructing, though, so... Always keep that in the back of your mind. May well be worth self-destructing your Juggernaut if it gets close enough to a base. Something is stopping these Juggernauts, I'm not sure what. Oh, a little bit of friendly fire right there from the Catapults. Uh, suddenly we're retreating. I'm not sure exactly why. Red team need only to pull the trigger here. Oh my goodness. The green player making an amazing comeback on the high seas, pushing back out, breaking out of their containment using those res subs to flip the entire navy of the red player on its head, going back against its creator here. Now all those green boats have ravaged the forces of the uh, red player Kyoji here. Wow. I'll be damned. 
Kyoji with no backup plan. Yeah, no economy, really. Uh, pretty much all of it was invested in a single advanced fusion reactor over here, which surprisingly came online. Uh, but I feel like it's not going to be long for this world as these ducks start to make their way across the map. Yeah. The lone torpedo bomber. Desperately chipping away at this underwater menace. <laughs> Tons of lunkheads as well, by the way. Making their way across the map. Looking to get a little bit of a fight going. But there's just too much here, right? I feel like there's got to be just too much T3 here for the red team. All they need to do is push forward here. I mean, these Thors could fire their EMP missiles. That could certainly work. Fire those EMP missiles. Paralyze most of the army over here. All the Shivas, all the Karkonets. All that can be paralyzed. March in with the Titans. Clean everything up. Whoa. Now the Behemoth. Certainly capable of bringing down those Titans. Needs to be well respected here. We need to see some uh, slow but steady splitties against that Behemoth. Otherwise, it's going to tear all this apart. Oh, but a Ragnarok has come up and online on the hills. It completely missed it, but it looks like Rikair is going for a Ragnarok, or rather has gone for a Ragnarok, and is going to start firing away. And we need to see a target these backlines here. Oh, maybe it did already. Maybe that was those ducks. Either way, the backline economy has been sort of shut down here for Yard, who was pumping out some T2 at the very least. Has a bunch of Aphises up and running, but for the most part, still in a little bit of trouble here. Lunkhead's not very convincing as far as the siege goes, but uh, yeah, basically everything else behind this is. The sheer volume of forces here is staggering. This is enough though, that's a lot of bulwarks. Bulwarks pretty good. Especially good against big swarms of units, right? Because they have so many different cannons that they're firing all the time. Very, very good at blasting away a lot of the, uh, a lot of swarm sort of style of play like this. Hey, yeah, you know what? I think this base will hold. Temporarily. Looks like Red Team Leader has passed away. <laughs> Been taken over by the Maroon player, who's now going to be uh, in charge of this base over here, I suppose. A lot of tumbleweeds under the water. Wonder what these are going to be used on. Yeah, I mean, the Ragnarok just getting a free trade. Free damage on all these Titans right here might be a little bit of an exaggeration. It certainly costs a lot of energy. You can see 20, 30,000 energy per second to fire this bad boy. But for what it's worth, I mean, you can melt Titans in moments. <laughs> Doesn't get much better than that. So the question is, why isn't this thing firing well into the back line here? answer might just be that it has, and uh, there's not much further for it to fire. Certainly could still chip away at some of the economies back here, though. Could fire at the yellow player. I don't think there's enough shielding here to protect the yellow player, and also some ricochet shots might be able to fly over the mountain, doing critical damage to the back line over there. Might be able to scuff up some of the maroon commander's units as well. Uh, I doubt it, though. It'd be pretty tough. Oh, advanced fused reactors. Chain react right there popping a large hole in the defenses over on the northern side right here. Very nicely done. And that is going to be an extremely, extremely prevalent opening right now for the blue team to uh, express. Yeah, try and try and sneak their way through. The back door is open, so to speak. Tumbleweeds have been redirected. Now crawling their way across the map towards all these ducks over here. Ah, we have the uh, test units out as, as well. The, uh, oh, what are they called? Experimental release candidate units. Like the demon, the flamethrower mech, which is a water traversable, believe it or not. Able to uh, partially submerge here. Definitely looks like a rad Gundam. <laughs> Man, those tumbleweeds. That was three tumbleweeds took off 25% of this uh, T3 unit's health. Just for reference here, that unit cost 6,000 metal versus the tumbleweeds, 65 metal. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's mind-boggling how efficient the tumbleweeds can be in the right situation. And Supreme Isthmus is certainly the right situation here. Down go the Titans as well. All ten of those Titans have been brought low here. 
Ragnarok has not been firing. Somebody finally comments that this Ragnarok should be uh, firing at the eco here. <laughs> the Seeker pointing out that it would be excellent to fire at the economies with that uh, Ragnarok there. And uh, not wrong. I think that's absolutely what that thing should be doing. Big old command queue happening right now. Not sure exactly where. A lot of fighters grouped up over here. I wonder what's uh, what's a cooking. I do see a lot of gunships mixed in as well. Cinemax with a fabulous economy over here. Not pumping out any T3 units. I guess focusing entirely on air forces. Not the end of the world. Building a bunch of those T2 fighters and getting them up in the air. Going to be well worth it when the uh, waves like this start to come a crashing towards your base. Yeah. Wouldn't mind seeing a couple of resbots eating all this up. A couple of those Webers, maybe. That would be, be pretty good. A couple of construction planes wouldn't be too bad either. Uh, suddenly, we've... 180 degrees. <laughs> what I thought was an overwhelming advantage for the red team has now suddenly flipped it flipped on its head. Tons of damage has been done to the or has been done to the red team. Now the blue team is leading with 3.6 thousand metal and eh, not quite actually 3.1 thousand metal coming in per second versus the red team's meager 2.8 meager right as if 2.8 as if anybody would be upset about 2.8 thousand metal per second. <laughs> These uh, Mercury firing away, actually doing a tremendous job against a lot of these fighters here. There they go. They're better against bombers, and especially clumped up bombers. Uh, but yeah, doing a great job of shutting down a whole lot of this before it even makes land. Now we are sending in torpedo bombers to the land, which is an interesting tactic, I have to say. It's a move that I don't think I've ever seen before, um, at least not intentionally but it looks like it's still managed to do some damage over here. Oh no, those are Marauders. Ah, Marauders have managed to get to the back lines and start shutting things down. Game speed is now lowered to just 0.66 with an FPS of 18. You know you've got some units when that happens. A lot of air units just got shot out of the skies though, so I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see those numbers crawl back up slowly but surely. We need one killer attack right now. Are the Marauder going to be it? Could be trying the very 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 best they can horse player doesn't really have a great way to navigate all of these uh wind turbines over here <laughs> titans trying to fire their rockets over here oh self-destruct i don't think that's gonna do what you think that's gonna do uh-oh Oh, okay. I was, I was worried it was going to chain react all the build power here. Oof. Putting it close there a little bit. Yeah, I mean, this is great. That's several thousand energy down the drain here for the red team. Nicely done. Harder and harder to find value here. Oh, well, this is cheeky. It does appear that the pink player is done playing around. <laughs> Decided they've had enough of these games. They're ready to end it all. Um, yeah, nowhere near enough anti-nuclear coverage. We have one anti-nuke for the entire back line over here of the blue team. Can certainly wipe out uh, one, if not two, players with a cleverly positioned nuke over there. Where, when, and why will we fire these is the question. Marauder still being a pain over here, by the way. Oh, if this Marauder were controlled... Certainly could pop all of the constructors over here. Might even be able to take out the air lab or two. A uh, little bit of an ABM stall there. Yeah, kind of a bummer. Looks like we've got bigger plans in the works here. The bright works. No. <laughs> I made that joke with some friends the other day. And it was, yeah, it's a, uh, a certified classic, as they say. This island will be repossessed. They don't need a warrant. Ah, looks like this Marauder finally will be dealt with over here. Out of the orange player's hair. And you know what? Getting rid of those wind turbines may only be to the benefit of the orange player, who now has way more space to go into a crazy amount of eco. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird kind of advantage, but uh, getting reminded that you can remove things as well as build them. Not, not the end of the world. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like the red team was thinking about a wall, Cayman. Uh, didn't come to fruition, though. 
I'm not even sure where the T2 is. It's buried in here somewhere. Or maybe it was killed. Yeah, it looks like it was killed. And down go a whole bunch of those constructors as well. Typically, once one of the teams has a little cannon up and running, it's pretty hard for the other one to get a little cannon up and running. They kind of counter each other. <laughs> but this ought to be a pretty solid defense over here. What are we at now? Seven, seven pulsars with an eighth on the way. Let's see how they do. Uh, you know what? Not nearly as good as I thought they would do. <laughs> Not nearly as good as I thought they would do. Uh, to be fair, though, that is 57,000 metal worth of Marauder and 94,000 metal of Titan. Oh, nice D-gun right there by Disco Starpig. Can we see another one? Oh, another huge one. Can we see another one? Oh, a massive one. 94,000 metal right down the drain right there because of that commander. Double Silver Star Commander right there. Oh, that's cute. Nicely done here. Don't think it's enough to shut down all these Marauder that are now stomp, stomp, stomping their way towards your main base. But that was pretty good. About as good as it gets. Oh, and down goes the commander. There we go. Finally brought low here, but not before shutting down at least four of those Titans. Marauder sandwiched onto the advanced fusion reactor so they can actually kill it. Fighting against those, uh, yeah, fighting against those shield, those bubble shields right there so that they can actually hit the thing. The rain of bombers. <laughs> Always beautiful to see those air units falling out of the sky. Pulsars and Titans, or rather, uh, Starlights and Titans working together. Try and blast down this enemy Titan here. And for what it's worth, do a damn good job. Yeah, that melted down pretty quick, actually. Holy. Why are we sacrificing the fighters? Oh, the horror. The carnage. <laughs> We're bombing them with fighters. That was, I mean, it had to be, oh, another massive clump of, what was that, EMP bombers? Oh my goodness. Had to be hundreds and hundreds of fighters going down right there. I don't even know what for. That was wild. The oceans, by the way, have been stripped clean. <laughs> not, not a plant, rock, or wreckage in sight here. As the, uh, yeah, the entire ocean has been completely devoided of life. Uh, we do have a juggernaut. You know what would be killer? We move this juggernaut into the base right here. We could probably win this match by just moving that juggernaut in. We could also probably win this match by firing the nukes. And there they go. Right on cue, those nukes are going to launch and head on over towards the base of Rikers. Get a, let's get an action shot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> uh, and away they go. Up into the sky. Reichardt's, uh yeah, his anti-nuke starts firing away, but there's no way that that's enough anti-nuke in order to deal with all these. One, two, three, four. That would be all she wrote. Boom. <laughs> ah, 2% left on that anti nuke, so I will have a chance to uh, fire again. But man, down goes the base of Rikert. Couldn't have fired those uh, any later, though. The front lines have already collapsed right now to the purple player. Purple and green both pushing in at the same time, trying their very best, anyways. Uh, we need to fire these immediately once more. If these don't absolutely fire. I mean, if they don't fire right this second, there's uh, not going to be much left to protect over here. The infinite rain from those catapults. That is brutal to stand in with. Catapults very effective at taking a direction that you don't want to exist anymore and turning it into a, uh, a hole in the ground that doesn't exist anymore. Are we going to fire the nukes again? I certainly think we should. Everybody's starting out anti-nuke, but you're kind of in your critical timing right now to hit that uh, nuclear button. Because once those anti-nukes come up, you've effectively got uh, 123,000 metal. And it's not really doing all too much for you. Are we are we out of nukes? Oh, we are out of nukes. Oh, those Cortex launchers just take so long to build. We're close, though. Yeah, you know what? We are pretty damn close. I'd say we fire them now. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think that's more than enough to overwhelm the Antonuke defenses. And at this point, you really don't have long. The forces are collapsing in on you. The pressure is mounting. Ragnarok built up here. Not sure how much value that's going to get, but it is built up there. At the very least. <laughs> Trying its very best. We did build a little bit of build power over here, by the way, but never used it for anything. Would have loved to see maybe a hovercraft lab or T3 underwater gantry, anything like that. Could have been huge. Juggernaut in the back line, though. Self-D? Self-D? Could we see a self-D on it? Oh, not going to be necessary as all the advanced fusion reactors pop anyways. I would love to see a self-D regardless to try and take down some of those enemy forces alongside the uh, Juggernaut there. But at the end of the day, it is the end of the day. And I don't see how the red team is going to stay in this fight for a whole, whole lot longer here. Really surprised we didn't see these nukes fire again. Critical oversight right now for the pink player not firing these immediately once more. I mean, so much damage. Like, we could shut down the entire back line here of the, the blue team. Hell, we could probably shut down the entire mid, mid lane of the blue team here. Purple player is pretty susceptible to nukage as well. Green player also surprisingly susceptible to nukage. Uh, where are we going with this? Uh, there's a lot of anti nukes right there. We're like right on the line for an anti nuke as well. And I think there might be enough anti nukes to stop these. There's quite a few of them right there, right specifically where they were targeted there. There goes the northern seaboard. Well, maybe not. Maybe not enough. Uh oh. Wow, the nukes still managed to squeak through right here. Massive collision over there, taking out one, two, three bases with a single nuclear strike. My goodness. Wow. I mean, there's a puddle for you. <laughs> we don't often see puddles with some free missiles, but there we go. A new lake has been built. Resbots now making their way across, trying to resurrect whatever they can over here. Put it all back together. Just brutal. Uh, this match is getting closer and closer to even here, but still pretty far away for the uh, red team, I have to say. Those nukes will be shot down. The forces are streaming in in every direction. There's just too many of them. That overwhelming economic advantage has just pushed itself too far. I do believe we are watching the death of the red team in slow motion here. Yellow Commander moving forward to try and degun down some of these forces. There's so many of them. Bulwark's going to be blasting away. Trying to, anyway. More nukes are launched. There's enough anti-nukes now, though. The window is closed. Titan over here will pop all the build power for Lusk's rebuilt center. Construction center. Now the green player is resurrecting a whole lot of these forces right on the mainland of the blue team. Or the red team, rather. These are always the hardest to finish out. Well, that'll do it, though. Juggernaut explosion. Looks like it was a self-D as well. Does manage to pop all of the energy converters right here for the pink player, uh, as well as shutting down a whole lot of those nuclear launchers. Down they go. Only seven remain. Only seven nuclear launchers. <laughs> Uh, only a few of them are charged, though, and I do believe that is going to be all she rode for the red team. A valiant hold, just way too little aggression, didn't manage to close it out here in the uh, earlier stages when they had more than enough T3 to in the middle of the map. There go the advanced fusion reactors. 
Gonna chain react all the way across into the base of Orange as well, and I think these bombers are probably gonna find their target over there anyways in just a moment. Titans also making their way downtown. Most of the red team already tapping out here. Eh, well, staying alive surprisingly long over here. But I have a feeling RG-22 is going to be the last of the red commanders. Uh, with any sort of meaningful economy here. We do, have a, we do have a lone pink commander hiding in the back. <laughs> the last commander for the uh, red team. 